What is up, my fitness junkies? It's a brand new week. We're doing this brand new Q&A accountability call. And we've got some new faces on here because we also have a new group called Alpha Accountability. Um, who It's a free group. And we're trying to kind of like show them what we're doing here and just have some extra accountability, um, spread what we're doing, you know, bring in some new faces, everything like that. So welcome to the group if you're new here. And we're going to dive into these and it's going to be a little bit more conversational. First question we got was from Daniel Zayman in the group. And it spent, it was, what has been the biggest game changer in terms of discipline for me? And then I'll, I want to get you guys' uh, kind of opinion on this too, Herb and everyone else, as far as discipline goes. So for me specifically, I would say kind of picking up, backing off of what Herb said uh, last week, as far as breaking bad habits I think that's step step number one when it comes to building your discipline, right? When you have those bad habits kind of holding you back, right? It's going to make it a lot harder to have discipline to create new habits, right? So I would say when it comes to discipline, a lot of people think you got to add more and more and more and more. I think it's more about removal, right? So I think, you know, removing certain things and removing maybe not even stuff that's a bad habit, but that's just not necessary so that it can make more room for, for some good, healthy habits. Right. So I, I would say that's kind of the biggest thing. And Herb talked about triggers, right. Kind of removing even triggers that maybe trigger those bad habits or things that you don't want to do. Right. Um, but I would say another thing to go even a step further is even stuff that's kind of stealing your willpower, kind of stealing your dopamine. I like to say, so like, you know, I talked about the example last week of me scrolling TikTok and that's like just kind of getting synthetic hits of dopamine, right? And it's just like, it's it's honestly destroying your willpower or like when you eat like a donut, right? And it's like, you get that and, and then you feel tired and it's like, you get that quick dopamine burst, but then you feel bad afterwards, right? There's lots of different things like that. So I would say that's that's been a big thing for me. Actually, this weekend um, ended up going on my phone and just because I was getting distracted too much, like I started literally, I turned off my notifications on everything. I just like turned off all notifications because like if I'm trying to work or I'm doing one specific thing, I don't want to be bombarded by a thousand other different things. So I think when it comes to discipline, it, it comes down to removing certain things that are stopping you from being disciplined and, and also like trying to center your focus so that you you're like 100% in the moment when you're trying to do the discipline acts that you're trying to to do right so that, that's my little spiel on that um also leo kind of piggybacked off of that question and he said like balancing life i think i already kind of answered some of that but i think another big part of that is not pouring from empty cup leo right like we we talked about that a little bit um so kind of like pouring into yourself first so that you do feel like you have more to give to everything else. Right. Um, yeah. so, so one thing Herb always says is he's, he's literally never trained a client in his 40 years of coaching before he, he's trained himself. Right. He always gets his workout in first thing and he gets that done. He pours into himself. Right. And so, so it's not that like it's selfish or like greedy. It's like, he's, He's doing that for himself that he so that he can lead and be the best version of himself for everything else that he's got going on the rest of the day. Right. So so that's kind of my spiel on all that. Um, who's got some stuff to jam on or questions kind of piggybacking off of that? Don't be shy, guys. I'll start calling on people. Yeah, I'll throw something in there, Cade, with that. Um, real simple for me. Started martial arts when I was 16. I learned discipline but it was forced upon me. So I'll give you a real simple way to get discipline. Surround yourself with like-minded people, ride their discipline, ride their discipline. Don't try to invent your own discipline by yourself in the corner, looking in the mirror, get with somebody that's going to hold you accountable, make a commitment and ride their discipline, make it your habit, you know, ask them straight up. What do you do? Right. It's what you do with my martial arts story. What do I got to do to have my own school? I'm going to have you run my school for a couple of years. I did. And I got my own schools. Right. Surround yourself with like-minded people. Alex. Yeah. yeah, Alex, you raise your hand. What's What do you got? Uh, just to kind of build off of the discipline and building it. Um, we're building. Um, with it, I guess a big piece for me, for my discipline, is really just my overall environment. Because um, I know you mentioned just kind of removing apps, removing notifications, just kind of making your life more, not more, uh, less 
stressful and chaotic is really once you remove all those things in your own little personal space, it kind of helps you focus on what your actual goals are and what you need to focus on in life and building that discipline. And with that overall environment, um, showing up is kind of also one of the big things I would say, because if you just can't do something as just get to where you need to go, or at least the building in which you need to go, then how do you expect yourself to get to like the end of what your goals are? So even some days when I, like, Hey, if you don't want to work out or lift weights at the gym, we'll just show up the gym and walk around it, say hi to someone kind of like what Herb mentioned, just go meet like-minded people. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those things where make the environment, the one you want to be in. And then discipline really doesn't, it's not a hard thing to do because you're already around all the things you want to do. Yeah. So, yeah. For sure. I think a lot of what you're saying is kind of like just creating less friction between you and that, that environment, right? Like you in the gym, it's like, you just get in the habit. It's like, you make it super simple of like, even if I just walk in there and then odds are, once you get there, you're, you're going to get a good workout in, right? Herb always talks about that. It's like, you know, the hardest part is just getting there for most people, right? Once, once you're there, most people get a good workout and they feel better afterwards, right? It's just, it's just making that time to make it happen. So for sure. I'm going to start calling on other people. Leo, I know I mentioned you a couple of times. You got anything to jam on that? Um, well, I agree with everything you guys are saying. Um, some of it's just a different perspective, but yeah, I have my own like uh, planner. You know, I try and plan out. Uh, someone mentioned, I missed the name. Someone tried, someone mentioned about planning out the week. Yeah. I try and do that. I do that mostly for work. Um, but I do have like in my morning routine, trying to at least go out and exercise and on and off about that, but making goals, setting, uh, making commitments um, to other people to to groups um that's that's probably my uh biggest motivation otherwise i can get distracted i like a lot of little hobbies I like fixing stuff so i can easily get distracted there's something always broken yeah but um yeah health should be the most important thing because you need that in order to do everything else yeah 100 so. percent, man. yeah i think <clears throat> to take it even a step further yeah put the workout on your physical schedule slash calendar as well like make that appointment with yourself I think that can be super powerful. It's like, this is my appointment with myself and my health, right? Um, I've, I've literally gone in with, with clients in the past and like on Zoom calls, I'm like, pull up your calendar and I make them put like workout, you know, as an appointment with themselves. So I think that could be really powerful. Um, and yeah, me and Herb always talk about it. We've got coaches, we got people that hold us accountable. It's like super powerful. So good stuff. Um, I want to call on... John, my man, since you're pretty, um, you know, new to the group calls, what's, what's your perspective on this? What do you, what do you got to say on, on discipline and everything? Yeah, I feel like I always start off looking at some of the, I guess, pain points I have in terms of, even if I have someone to keep me accountable, sometimes that, you know, they're busy. I can't always rely on other people. So I sometimes have to think internally, what can I do? even if it's not just workout focus, but just life in general. Um, I think starting off is you just got to cut out the distractions. And so to like what you said with notifications on my phone, I just put on my, my phone on do not disturb. If I have something I need to knock out or I need to figure out and, and work through, put my phone on do not disturb. I don't have the TV on. I don't even have music going. Um, if I do anything, it's I take a piece of paper and a pen and I write out what I need to do um my coworkers, they laugh as i call it my my hit list of i know what i need to knock out when i need to do it by that's that's what i gotta do and i just take it head on um sometimes that's a drawback sometimes it doesn't always work sometimes i miss other things going on but in my mind if i need if i only have myself um at that point i just need to be able to shut everything else out and focus on what's in front of me and just be where my feet are. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, John. I've talked to a lot of people that do similar things for work. They yeah. don't do it for themselves. Look yeah. at this is my layout of the day. These are the conference calls I've got. Where's your workout? Huh? Where's yeah. your prep and your food? Huh? Where's your date night? What? <laughs> right. So we'll do it. We know how to do it. We're just not doing it for ourselves. Yeah. Right? And unfortunately, the honest to God's truth is, again, I'm just guessing, but by experience, 
You tell your employer you're done, he's going to wish you a good day and find somebody to replace you tomorrow. Yeah. It's that simple, right? So make sure that we're prioritizing ourselves, right? Here, the people like yourself and um, uh, Autumn, getting, getting, into, getting into new, new, new workouts and everything, put yourself, get greedy, guys. Nobody's going to do it for you, right? Surround yourself with the like-minded people, make that list for yourself and execute. Yeah, yeah. I think the best piece of my first company I was at, <laughs> Our VP, his, he told me that uh, the one mantra he's always had, best piece of advice he could give someone is to be selfish. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, um, no one, not you're not necessarily going to have someone who has your back, but you've got your spine. And so that's what's going to hold your back up. And so be selfish. And the thing is, like, when you do that, it sounds, you know, I, I feel like people hear that and it's kind of jarring, right? We, we've had little check-ins where we're like, be selfish, be greedy. Right. And we're not saying like, just screw everyone else. It's like, yeah. but that's how you are the best version of yourself so that you can give more to others. Right. So it's kind of the catch 22 of that. Yeah. Um, and, and don't make your first goal, your first discipline to lose a hundred pounds, make it something that's so tangible that you can build yeah. off of that. You get a couple wins under your belt. You're going to get a little, yeah. you be like, see what else I can do. All right. So building discipline starts with little tiny things, not the big things. It's like, look, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to college for the next four years and I'm going to walk in blizzards. And it's like, what? How about get up and go to the gym in the morning, bro? <laughs> Let's try that. Cool. <clears throat> well, before I move on to the next question, anyone have any anything else they wanted to say on that on that question on discipline? Any other game changers for anyone else that you wanted to share? You feel yourself slack and reset. You said when you when you see yourself slacking reset yes sir can you expand on that <laughs> well, well i mean if you're say you're screwing up on your meal plan you know what i mean just not eating what you're supposed to do just yeah. Yeah. i guess take time to think about what you're doing and why you're doing it figure out the root cause and then eliminate it yeah you know what you should put on your list to do every day guys when you get up in the morning forgive Press your yourself. teeth forgive yourself <laughs> give yourself for coming up short yesterday on the meal prep maybe i didn't do something don't beat yourself up about it regroup like you said just recharge right usually some, those little tiny things are saying something else is wrong so got to pay attention to that but i see so many people get so upset when they like something happens the very first time i'm like really you couldn't do it all at once huh <laughs> it's like come on guys don't beat yourself up forgive yourselves and get on that back on the wagon <clears throat> nice well, cool. I'm going to move on to the next question, guys. So this one came from Graham, who's on here. So thanks for this, Graham. He asked, like, when do you know when you should be kind of focusing on bulking? When when do you know when you should be focusing more on cutting? And I kind of threw this in. You didn't really ask this, Graham, but also like, when should we focus on both kind of recomp, like building muscle and losing fat at the same time? All right. My, yeah. my answer for this, and we'll get Herb's perspective on this as well, um, but my goal for you guys at the very least. So for, for males, I want to get you to below 20% body fat. That's kind of the healthy body fat percentage range for males. For females, it's more like 25, maybe even a little bit above that as far as what's healthy. Um, really for males, I, I try to push for under 15 and for females, I try to push under 20. That's kind of like aesthetically where you can see abs, see a lot of definition, but at the very right. least. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, Zach, let's get you on mute. Yeah, brother. sorry, I'm I'm muting I'm muting myself. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so, so pretty much if you're, <clears throat> um, if you're wanting to bulk, I would say you you need to be under twenty percent at the very least. Really, I, I try to strive for fifteen because it, if you're wanting to bulk, like and being a surplus of calories, and you're above that, then uh, then you're just you're gonna add more to your body fat percentage. Right. So, so you need to kind of pay attention to the body fat percentage. And that's why we, we are always pushing you guys to get an accurate one, right? Not just like the, the, uh, the trusty Amazon scale body fat percentage, right? We want you to get like a DEXA or an in body um, measurement so that you know that, okay, this is where I'm at. This is pretty accurate. This is reliable, right? So um, get yourself to that healthy body fat percentage range before you even think about bulking. Okay. Um, my thing on cutting though, kind of depends, right? So it, if you are severely overweight, right? If you've got like 40, 50 plus pounds to lose, if that's your goal, I would say your goal should be to 
maintain muscle while you lose that just pure fat. Right. And we're, we're trying to strive for that. If you're, if you're like under that, maybe you, you want to lose 20 pounds of fat, you know, maybe even closer to like 20, 25 or even below that, like you just got a little bit of fat to lose and you just want to be in better overall shape, you know, start seeing more definition, everything like that. Then I would say like, you can be more in that recomp zone, right? You, you can build some muscle and lose fat at the same time. Right. Um, even some people drastically losing 40, 50 pounds plus we've had them gain some muscle and lose that much weight. Right. But it's definitely tougher if you've got that much to lose. So um, that's kind of my perspective on it. Herb, you got anything to, to piggyback on that? Yeah. I mean, you know, guys, the time to cut, there's all time, like Kate said, there's more times to cut than there is to bulk. Okay. Cutting for a, uh, I got a wedding. I got a photo shoot. I got something coming up. I want to look halfway decent for it so we can really manipulate some carbs and stuff and get down on that. Zach can tell you all about cutting carbs and no water. Um, but I would definitely, again, Small ones, not big ones. I mean, for a show, we diet for 16 weeks. That's too long, guys. I'm going to shoot myself in the freaking head. Six, eight weeks is a good cut, right? Bulk cut, bulk cut, back and forth. But again, it's very individual. You'll never see Kate or I ever push the button and print out something and say, oh, this is the cookie cutter thing that we have everybody do that's bulking and cutting. It's so subjective to the individual and you're, you know, where you're working and, and you know what time, working out in the night, working out in the daytime. So um, I think that you definitely have to be bulking or cutting or doing something goal wise, not just I'm eating good and healthy. There's nothing to measure unless you have some specific goal. So, you know, <clears throat> Graham, does that specifically answer your question that you asked with this, or do you have anything to, to kind of piggyback off that? No. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, I, yeah. Case by case basis. I, I now I kind of see where both y'all are with like how you would do it uh, for yourself. And that makes sense. Yeah. Now everybody's different. Um, you know, when you diet, like I'll take my body fat, it's about 11, 12 right now. I'll get it down to 4% for the show, but I'll still eat a piece of cheesecake every day. I've got very, very active metabolism, high blood sugar. So I need to keep that in my uh, balance. My wife, dude, she looks at sugar. <laughs> she goes over the edge. <clears throat> so everybody's different 100 percent. yeah so for me you know um and it's every like it's, it's it's specific to everyone kind of where you're at right but that's why we push on the body fat percentage to get that measured right so if, you, if you've been in here for a while and you haven't gotten an accurate body fat me measurement make sure to get that um if you haven't been in, your, in for a while get it as early on as you possibly can so that we can have those measurements moving forward kind of have that progress tracking Right. So, cause we always have people, um, when they, when they do get it, they're like, man, I wish I would have had this when I first started. Right. Because they've already made a ton of progress. Right. So they would have known how much progress with all the numbers they would have made like, Oh wow, I've gained this much muscle. I've lost this much body fat. So the early on that you can get that and that it honestly, just like we say with the progress pictures, like if you don't take your progress pictures in the beginning, then you make a ton of progress and you're like, man, I wish I could compare that. It really does help with the motivation when you put that stuff side by side and you're like, I've done all this like quantifiably. I can see the numbers. I can see the progress. Right. So um, I kind of got went on a tangent with that. But uh, yeah, so I, I'm to to make it super simple and layman's with that. It's just like going off the body fat percentage. That's that's where I would decide if like if we're bulking, cutting, recomp. That's kind of what makes my decision with that. So um, anyone else got any? Piggyback questions on that one. Let's see if I want to call on someone with this. Alex, I know that you're a, a frequent DEXA scan um, client. You get that like every quarter, right? So what's what's maybe something you have to say for everyone on here who who maybe hasn't gotten an accurate body fat percentage? Like, how has that maybe changed your mindset with things? Yeah, no, kind of also to go off of what you mentioned, where you really want to get to that healthy body fat percentage. So for me, I started at what, 208, somewhere around there. And then I think the lowest I've ever been was like 165 with you. And even when I was down to 165, and I got my DEXA scan, I was still over 20% body fat, which you would think, hey, like, this tall skinny dude here <laughs> would have a lower body fat percentage. But really, when you get that scan, it kind of lets you know that 
although like you look super thin and you have like some muscular definition like you still need to get that body fat percentage down to help like to be healthier live longer and all that great stuff so um i really do think if not like quarterly but like twice a year at least like when you start and kind of like have your goals have those percentages it really kind of helps uh it really changes your mind on what a healthy body is because you see a very thin person like oh that person looks great and then you're like, I want to be like that. But really, like if they have a super high body fat percentage or maybe a super low one, like it's not it's not good for you. So really just kind of having more of an overall like healthy goal versus more of a um, like aesthetic goal. I think it's just kind of what knowing what those like know when to cut, when to bulk and when to recomp is kind of a good way to kind of think about it. So, yeah, yeah. because, you know, with you, like we were specifically in the beginning, it was like we're trying to shoot for a specific weight. Right. And you hit that weight and it's like. But now once we get the DEXA scan, like it's like it, it lets us know, OK, we're what are we working on now? Because then we kind of shifted more towards like, OK, let's build muscle and let's chip away at that body fat. Right. So, um, so yeah, it really can be a good OK. If, if you're not really sure what your next step is, kind of with Graham's question, it's like it tells you that and it kind of points you in the right direction. And it can be really humbling, to be honest. <laughs> like um, so I, I recently, you know, lost 20 pounds, went on a cut for my own. And that was a thing that kind of sparked like, okay, I, because I came off of a powerlifting competition, I got a DEXA scan. I was like, wow, how's that 18% body fat, which is really high for me. Um, and I was like, damn, like it was humbling. And I was like, let me get after it. Right. And, and burn all this body fat off. So I've lost like 20 pounds in the last three months. So um, David, I want to call on you. Cause I know you get body fat measurements as well. So what's, what's maybe something. With well, this for you're, you? well, you're asking the guy that, unintentionally bulk for like 15 years so <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm done with bulking <laughs> That's it. uh as far as uh uh to piggyback off your question i mean yeah i think i'm doing more of a recomp because i see the well, well coming with the the body scans um the progress that i'm making and sometimes it might not be what you're what you want to see but it it gives you an idea of what you need to do to get to your goal. Right. Um, and, you know, um, you know, as far as what I'm doing right now, yeah, I'm, I'm going a little bit slower. You might see me lose as, as far as body weight, maybe about a pound a week. And you can see my muscle uh, or yeah, my muscle increase and uh, my body fat decrease slowly, but surely, but it, even though it's slow and I'm monitoring it with those scans, I, I I feel that I can make this uh more of a permanent change because you're you're changing your your uh your habits little by little. So you see what uh you might have had like a bad week of uh, maybe you didn't prep all your meals and it'll show, you know, when you go take that scan, which I do maybe now about once every month at minimum. Uh now you know, okay, maybe I should eliminate that or keep it to a minimum. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you get, you, you come up with a game plan. It works for me. Yeah. It's like a whole nother accountability tool in your toolbox, right? Like you got, you got weigh in yourself, you got us like checking your workouts and everything, but then you also have, oh, I've got to, I've got to face the, the scan <laughs> and see if I'm yeah. really honest with everything. Right. Yeah. So, num numbers don't lie. Yep. So now do you use the DEXA scan? I use the, what, what is the, the in-body? Yeah, the in-body. Yeah. yeah, they have what it at, uh, it's That's it's one where you'll, it's, it's uh, they have it at my gym and they also have it at the supplement store I go to where you stand on it and you hold the handles. And it circles yeah. around? It, I've seen some do that. This one just, it, it uh, has sensors on your hand and uh, on your feet and it'll weigh, it'll, it'll give you your body weight and then it'll measure your uh, muscle mass, your body fat, your water. And then right. uh, at the store I go to, you just enter your phone number and then you can see your progress every time you go in. So it'll tell you where you were last time and any kind of trends that you're making. That and, kind of, Yeah, that sounds yeah. like what we did. I was just curious because I'm sitting here thinking, you get a DEXA scan every month. Daggone, that's expensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no, no, this <laughs> no, th this is free. I just walk in. I was like, can I yeah. use a scanner? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't even get a DEXA scan every month. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm usually well, those are expensive. I think yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we've we've got some decent resources that have some good deals, but um, but yeah, they they can be pretty pricey, but yeah. but cool. So yeah, so I think we'll move on from that question. Um, that was some good feedback from you guys. Appreciate that. Um, next one. These next few will be pretty quick, and then we'll get to maybe some other questions that you guys have. Oh, I think uh, Herb shared. Oh, Herb I just shared in body. When you get a chance, guys, you can look at what the embody sheet looks like. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, he put that in the chat there. That's kind of what you would get with an embody. And yeah, like David said, you can usually find those even at supplement stores and stuff yeah. like that. So and, and I will point out something also, because again, think of it this way. You go to a doctor, you get, you just know that some bitch wants blood, right? You come to a, a fitness trainer, a, a nutritional consultant, you know, we want your body fat, <laughs> <laughs> right. So this test is our blood work. I mean, which by the way, we can also get and, and help you too. But on this, um, this is not a picture of it, but I had a client earlier today. She's great. She's doing a great job. Looks really good. Body fat's a little high, but her visceral fat is not supposed to be higher than a 10. It's a nine. And I was really shocked. That's the kind of fat that causes damage to your organs and stuff. So that's what we're going to address before we talk about the cosmetic stuff. So there are a lot of little tiny things that as coaches, we need to be able to trick out and get those out of the way so we can address those where you're holding your water injuries, just stuff like that. So again, there's a lot more than just the cosmetics, but when we say body fat, trying to make sure that we, we don't lose weight, we lose body fat, Yeah. right? We always talk about, oh, I got to lose some weight. Yeah, but you got to lose fat, right? So the mindset, it's almost like when we start these calls out, we're always like, what are you most grateful for? If you have a hard time finding something, that's the point. We want to shift your mind to a grateful state, right? Because again, if I told you guys hundred bucks to you, if you can write down a hundred things you're grateful for, of course, you're going to find a hundred things. Everybody's got them. But on the spur of the moment, put your mind in that. Yeah. When you go into the gym, I'm most grateful. I got into the gym this morning. I'm feeling good. I'm going to crush this workout, right? Kate thinks he's got me. Coach Herb thinks he's got me with the nutrition. I'm going to show them, right? It's a game, but you know, got to have fun doing it. Yeah, one more little quick thing, and then we'll move on from this one. But just to piggyback off of what Herb said, one one other kind of really useful piece of information you can get from the Embody DEXA is uh, if you have any sort of asymmetries, right? Like it'll show you like, oh, dang, I've got more muscle on my right arm than I do on my left, right? And stuff like that. And, you, you know, then you can be just aware of it. More knowledge is power in that sort of situation. We can, you know, maybe do more unilateral movements to even that out, stuff like that. So just that, that's the last tidbit I'll say on that stuff. But let's move on. These will be pretty quick ones. Um, David Sassower asked, uh, favorite exercise for leg growth? I'm going to make this one pretty short and sweet. Um, I said squats. You know, I, I would say, like, if you had to pick one leg exercise, because um, because also I feel like it is working your core a lot, too. So if I just had to, like, pick one leg exercise, um, I would say squats. Um, but I think it should be a combination of, uh, you know, compound movements and isolation movements. I think you should have like squats and deadlifts or, or at least like similar movements with machines like that. Um, but also like your leg extension, leg, leg curls, right? Cause you want to be able to isolate those muscles that you're trying to work as well. Right. Kind of hit it from both angles. So I'll leave that one pretty short with that. Herb, you, you got anything on that? Um, squats, I would have said back in the day, um, still would say squats if they're done right, but unfortunately people don't squat. If they're trying to make their legs grow, why the hell are you going past par parallel? Why? You're no longer on your quads, right? So again, people aren't using the exercise properly. They think burying your butt on the ground, standing up. That's great core exercise, great overall power. Not going to do a thing to make your legs grow. You got to isolate. Like Kate said, isolate the quads, isolate the hamstrings, right? The tie-ins, um, I'm a big fan since I hurt my back of belt squats and double leg leg press mm -hmm. with your legs way down on the platform, right? Not up high using your hammies. Um, but again, it, it's great because there's so many things you can do, right? I can't really get the most out of my squats anymore because of my surgery, but I can still kill belt squats and single leg press. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so Trust me, I'm not suffering because I can't squat anymore. Um, yeah, but again, hack squats are good too. Um, yeah. I like that more because now in a hack squat, I'm not worried about balance. I'm not worried about tipping over. Now I can be like, now I can get down there deep and stretch those 
tear ducts in my kneecaps out and get that going really good. So um, variety is going to always be the thing, guys. It's always going to be variety. Yeah, you can't just pick one, right? We're switching things up for you guys every month, right? Giving you more variety because your body's got to keep keep adapting. And David said hack squat as well. I, I honestly believe, I, I, I uh, agree. I've fallen in love with hack squats. I love them as well. I think they're really good for growth. Yeah. Um, so cool. So anyone else got any maybe off the wall leg movements that you love <laughs> that we didn't mention? No, my wife, no. my wife thinks kicking me in the ass is a good leg exercise. I'm trying to tell her it's not going to do it, but she keeps doing it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to move on to the next one. So, uh, gr- good protein snacks. This came from Mike G, uh, Mike Guerrero. Um, he says he was asking good protein snacks that are also like tasty. I feel like we'll, we'll have some, some of you guys definitely chime in on this one. Um, but for me, I would say like, I've said it a thousand times, but those, those Oikos triple zero Greek yogurts. I love those. I slam like three of those a day now. I absolutely love those. Um, mm. and it, just because it's fresh on my mind, cause I, I'm coming back from that vacation, that trip to Colorado, like some of the, the really easy ways I got protein in, um, was hard boiled eggs. That's always super easy. And, and I like them. I think they taste really good. Um, the other one was just like the pre-made premier protein <laughs> cartons, but like protein shakes in general, just to like make it super easy. Right. And so we've, we've gotten the, the fruity pebble dimatized ones. Everyone loves those in here. Um, but yeah, just like easy protein stuff like that. And then um, I actually love the premier protein, uh, protein cereal as well. Um, so if you're just looking for like easy snacks that help, you know, gaps in between your, your protein, maybe you ran out of prep and stuff like that. Um, those are some examples for me. So what what do you guys got? Who's got some some good tasting protein snacks that you like? What do you, you got? Can't see it. Uh Quest Bars. Quest bars. Mm. Yeah, I love Quest Bars. Yeah, what's what's your flavor of choice? I like the cookie dough. I get the cookies and cream, but the crispy. It's okay. 150 per bar and I think eight it's 18 grams of protein. Nice. Yeah, I, I like Quest Bars. For sure. Um, there was another one I'm trying to think. I can't remember. There was something another protein bar that I really enjoy that I had recently. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. What what who else has some protein snacks you like? What do you do, Zach? The little butt. He's got a little butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Just chicken. Damn bodybuilder. I mean, <laughs> That 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 are some protein <laughs> shakes, but yeah, that, that's that's something me and Herb might have like a round table here soon, just on the the protein topic because we hear it so much. Like, um, the hardest thing is getting my protein in, right? And then, but it's like, why? Like, it's you just have to prioritize it, right? It's like, um, if you're if you're prepping your protein, which we always encourage you, like that's the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing to kind of have ready and prepared and. Uh, and have ready for yourself so prioritize cooking a bunch of chicken i, I love that answer zach that's probably the best answer we could have got <laughs> i mean you you, you already told you guys have told me multiple times you get if you're gonna overeat get that protein in you yeah. know what i mean so we've yeah. trained you well herb what about you you got any no i like the hard-boiled eggs too um i'll cut, take the hard-boiled egg cut it in half take the yolk out put garlic hummus in there for a little taste, a little extra protein. Um, you know, again, basic like that. But like Zach says, to be honest with you guys, just freaking eat. Eat. You can call it a snack if you want, but I don't, I eat everything I can get my hands on when it's time to eat. So, um, you know, but like hard boiled eggs are a great snack. Yeah. I was going to, because when I posted something on Facebook recently, this guy like went on a tear. Um, Cause he asked me what, what are the best protein sources? I said, eggs, lean beefs. And I said, whey protein, mm-hmm. right? Um, those are the top three. Yeah. Those are the, the, those have the highest biological value of protein. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and he just wanted to like, just debate me, I think, but, but I just wanted to kind of like let you guys know, cause I talked about tasty protein snacks and my answers, but if you're going for like, what, what's the highest quality protein I can get, those would be the ones that I would go with. You, so. you know, and I think it's funny, Kate, because 
when people ask me about nutrition and, you know, my clients and the people in the show, whatever, they, they act like what I'm saying is a personal thing. It's like, yeah. guys, if vegan diets were the shit, I'd be eating vegan diets. Yeah. Right. So Kate and I've done all the discovery, all the work, all the, 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 the planning and figure out what works, what doesn't. That's what we're doing. So when I say A, B and C works, people go, oh, that's bullshit. It's like, give me some better information. I'll make a better choice. But right now you don't have that. You have a talking yeah. point. So my whole thing is, again, it's the same thing when I teach, right? Don't, I'm not going to demonstrate a move and then say, okay, everybody go practice it. And you're going to raise your hand. It's like, you didn't even fucking try it yet. I'm not talking to you, right? Go out, try your food plan, figure out what works and then come back and go coach work. Didn't work. What am I going to do? Boom. That's what you do. Right. But you got to execute, right? You go to the gym, try it, see if it works, see how it feels. Right. I love these dumbbells. I don't like this barbell thing a whole lot. And try it. Now you have a point of reference that we can have a conversation and go, why didn't you like it? Well, coach, it made my shoulders really hurt instead of, I don't know, it looks weird, <laughs> right? So try things before we we, we go out and, and judge things though. Yeah. Well, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on right to the next one and then we'll get into some of y'all's extra questions here. Um, but supplements, and I'm, I'm not going to go super in depth on this because we just recently did a coaching call on supplements, um, you know, maybe a month ago or something like that. But Paul Roby was asking about good supplements. I'm just going to say my top three real quick, kind of the the first tier, you know, what, what I feel like you guys, you know, what I've put on y'all's meal plans of what you should prioritize. And Paul, if you're watching the recording later on on this, or if anyone else wants a more in-depth kind of answer on supplements, I have that recording um, on YouTube from that coaching call that we did recently. So I can send that to you. So just let me know. Um, but I would say, kind of the tier list, I would say like creatine, super important, right? You, you got to be taking creatine. Me and Herb have beaten a dead horse on why that's important. So creatine for sure. Um, I would say protein, just like I said, if you're not getting enough from your diet, right? Like protein supplements aren't a hundred percent necessary. If like Zach said, if you're just getting your chicken in, right? Like if you're hitting your protein in your meals, like that's, that's just what it is. It's, it's a supplement to make it easier to get it in. Right. So um, protein is on there for me and the multivitamin, like I tell you guys, and my, my stance on caffeine is kind of changing, but I still recommend it that, you know, there are still studies show it can boost performance a little bit. It's not as exaggerated as people have made it seem in the past, right? Like, and I think pre-workout has too much can affect your sleep in the long run and everything. Um, but I would say caffeine's still on that list for me. Um, and as far as like a mood boost and also appetite suppression, there's other kind of benefits I would say as well. So that that's my short tier list. I'm going to leave it pretty simple on that. I could go, you know, we could talk hours on supplements every time we get on here, um, go down rabbit holes and everything like that. But anyone got any anything to piggyback on that? Or any piggyback questions or to build off of that? I would, I would add D3, magnesium. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would say D three as well. I should have had that. Yeah, it, guys, it, it, it's it's like saying well, what's your favorite food, and I love to eat, right? Same. So the night the idea of supplements is you might need one for a while and then not need one for a while. But D, you know, again, we're coming up to winter, guys. You know, I know yeah. you guys down there in Texas got your sun right now, but pretty soon D three is going to be important. You guys trying to sleep? Magnesium has done so much for me; it's retarded. Right? Hey, Herb. Yes, sir. Dude, that, that uh, D3, that shit puts me to sleep. I love it. <laughs> yeah. It, it, again, it's, like uh, my, it's beautiful. My guy will say, since your body can, it's the only vitamin your body can produce, he thinks D3 is a, is a hormone, not a vitamin. So, and it has hormone-like effects. So, yeah, I just think it's necessity for sure. Yeah, I should have had that in there. That's for sure. One that, I needed to add that into the meal plans even, honestly. Yeah. Like you know, and again, again you, you go down that rabbit hole because D3 absorbs better if you have zinc and magnesium present, yeah. right? So it's that catch-22. Because, But everything that we do compounds, right? When people say, hey, I'm taking this whey protein, I lost 20 pounds. It wasn't the whey protein, bro. It was your workout and your butt kicking and the fact you stuck to your diet. Don't give something that much uh, play. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to compound, right? I'm doing my workouts. I'm prepping my food. I'm taking my supplements. I'm getting my sleep. I'm getting results. Wow. Great. Do it again <laughs> tomorrow. Well, cool. Let's, let's open it up to just open discussion now. So, you know, just raise your hand if you got any, 
any random questions or anything else you thought of that you want to jam on real quick? Don't be shy, guys. We got Graham. What's up, Graham? How how often should you do one of those body fat scans? I I go personally like once a quarter, like once every three months. Um, cause that, you know, you don't necessarily need to go every month. Like if you have access to it, like David does where you can go every month and it's free, like, sure. That's, that's good. Like we can just be even more dialed in. Um, you know, I, I would say once a quarter is pretty good. Uh, at the very least, I would say, like Alex said, every six months, I yeah. think like you, you should be at least seeing where you're at every six months at the very least. But I think once a quarter is much better than that. Mm -hmm. So good question. And just so you guys know, because we always talk about what's realistic weight loss wise, right? One to two pounds loss per week. Um, what to expect kind of realistically body fat percentage loss wise. I would say one super, like you should at least be losing one, one per month, 1%. That's like low into the totem pole Two, I would say like, that's, that's pretty good. Like if you're losing 2% per month, you're on a really good rate. If you're really crushing it, like 3% plus is is where you're at that's kind of realistically what you can expect so does that answer your question graham yeah i found a place that's like if you go to that website the in body website they'll and then put in your your uh, mailing uh zip code it'll show you a map of like where the closest ones are and so i found a place where it's like 15 bucks so yeah, it's pretty nice. well. That's just interesting, you know. Nice man. Okay, I didn't even know that. So so guys, like if you if you've been struggling to find an in body place, just go to the in body website. Put in your zip code. That's that's really good, helpful information. Appreciate that, Graham. Sweet. Who else has got some stuff? Raise raise those hands, guys. Quickly, let's do it. Mel. Mel, what's up? Well, like tonight, I walked into the gym, and I mean, my knees are killing me. I don't know why. So like doing them backward squat things, I kind of held on. It, am I still getting the same effect as doing it non-holding on? Does that make sense? So you're doing the one-legged uh, Romanian deadlifts? No, you're, are, are you doing the reverse lunge? Yeah, reverse squats. Oh, reverse lunge. Okay. You're saying. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say just, you know, from the videos that you were sending um, when you were sending videos for those, um, I'm fine with you using a little bit stabilization for now, yeah. right? <laughs> but just use it use it as minimally as you can. Don't, right. you know, you okay. don't make the exercise super easy for yourself. Don't use that as a crutch, right? right? Still no, challenge. I got it. Yeah. It's, okay. for, it's for balance, not leverage. Yeah. Okay. So if you're holding it for balance or touching, that's one thing. But if you're grabbing that some gun and just driving all the way into it, it's like, yeah. Nah. Okay. So you know, Mel. Yeah. Don't pretend you don't know. Well, I got you. Girl. Sometimes I double question myself. No, that's always good, guys. Never, again, Kate and I say this all the time because Kate and I get in some wacky ass to sit, cut conversations. There's no dumb question. There's never going to be a dumb question on this format or any other ones that we do. You got a question? Find the answer, man. It's going to open the door for all your other answers and questions. And somebody else probably has the same question. Yep. You know, I mean, we can get away with a bunch of questions on here. We got Zach. So that's telling you a little bit. Right, Zach? <laughs> I like to mess with him when he's muted and doing exercise. Got <laughs> <laughs> a boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Graham, do you have another question or you just haven't lowered that hand? Oh, okay. Cool. I'm going to call on a couple people. Autumn, what has been your journey so far, girl? There's a lot of stuff I've seen you on Facebook. I know Zach's doing a lot with you. There's a lot of overwhelming stuff for you to get into, isn't it? Yeah, I got a lot going on personally as well, but I've been enjoying going to the gym and learning how to eat properly and all yes. that other fun stuff. Yeah, it's fun as an adult to try to learn shit you should have learned a long time ago. <laughs> it's like, shit, no one told me this earlier. But, yeah, because my parents would just sit me in front of a TV and be like, there you go. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. And finish everything on your plate or you don't get up. You can't move. Yeah. Yep. We went through all that. But no, I, I just want to welcome you here and just say, hey, 
you're an inspiration. Keep those posts coming. There's a lot of people and uh, that I know some of a lot of young ladies are giving you thumbs up because it's like someone needs to say this. This is not an easy thing to do, but it's something everybody's got to do. I've had to, I've had to get out of my comfort zone. That's for sure. Cause I'm not used to posting those kind of pictures showing my body off to yeah. other people. Yeah, no, it's good. It, again, it's, these are how you get habits. You know, you do things that you didn't think you could do, right. Mm -hmm. You overcome them, you build that confidence and sky's the limit for you, girl. So yeah, I'm going to be excited about uh, watching your journey. So keep posting. Well, thank you. Awesome. I'm going to call on John. I know you were struggling with your mindset a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm gonna call on you, brother. Is was this helpful for you? And anything we can help you through on this one? Yeah, I think it's kind of just going back. I feel like I just need to lock in almost of just starting the the base building blocks and building that foundation. And I feel like I've slipped a little bit in terms of staying on my workouts, making sure I'm sticking to the meal plan, doing all the the small things that lead up to the bigger things. Yeah. Uh, and so my plan right after this is I'm about to go to Trader Joe's and just going in there, getting my chicken, getting the bare minimums, getting the, the olive oil yeah. and walking out, not, yeah. not looking at any of the snacks or <laughs> anything like that. Yeah. And just making that plan of almost that, that grocery list is my version of the kill list for the store. I'm yeah. going in, knocking out those things. I'm going to get it done. And then that's going to lead me to the next step of now let's cook this, let's prep this, let's get the meals ready yeah. and just ignore everything else. Phone on do not disturb yeah. and just hone in on that. Nice man. Yeah. The same focus you've been putting in your job since it's been crazy these last couple of months, let's, let's dive into you and, uh, and yeah, just start. And it doesn't have to be, happen overnight. Like you said, start with that one step. That's going to get you that one step closer. Right. And yeah. that's going to build momentum. It's going to get you there hundred percent. And, you know, and I, I think guys too, there's one misconception, I think torpedoes a lot of people. You get up every day, you got to brush your teeth. You got to brush, some people got to brush their hair, not me so much. Kate's got to brush his mustache a little bit. <laughs> there's things you got to do every day over and over and over and over and over again. Guys, when you say, I'm going to work out, these are my, these are my habits, I'm going. You got to redo that every day. It's not easy. You get done, you you punch the clock, you hit your, your alarm and you're ready to go. Tomorrow, you got to do it again and you got to do it again. So don't beat yourself up if you hit that bump and go, oh, I screwed up after two weeks. Yeah, take a deep breath, get back into it. Because everything that we do that matters to us the most, we got to redo every day, right? You wake up the next day, it's like, oh, I can feel my chest from yesterday, today's legs. You start working on legs, guys. Chest day's over, get it out of the way, right? So give yourself time. Leo, I'm going to call on you because you're new in here as well, sir. Um, was this helpful for you? Any any big takeaways on your end? Uh, no, you're just refreshing me. Um, sorry, I didn't have much to say, but uh, I'm not really coming from a place of, uh, you know, uh, feeling like I can add much to that. Um, it reminded me of a few, you know, little snacks that I could look at or getting some protein, but no, I have, don't have a whole lot to contribute outside of what I've already heard. Um, Got to renew every day. I like what Herb was saying. You know, it's just as important. It's, if you're brushing your teeth every day, yeah, you know, you go to the gym every day. Or I plan on trying to also balance a little, uh, you know, jog, cardio. Um, but, um, you know, just getting at it after it every day. No, thank you, though. It's, uh, it's good to have the group. It's good to hear. Uh, just get that ball rolling with the momentum, keeping all those ideas fresh. Uh, to, to, to go at it with uh, all your tools, you know? Yeah, so, sure, sir. Well, appreciate, appreciate you being on. So guys, Leo's considering <clears throat> joining the team. Um, anyone in here got some advice or words of encouragement for him? Yeah, me. I couldn't do this without you guys. I appreciate that. You keep me grounded. You keep, you know, I know exactly what I have to do. And it just does that for me. If I tried to do this on my own, I'd be back in my old ways and my everything else. <laughs> well, you're crushing it, Melanie. So appreciate that. I'm working on it. <laughs> what I would say is it works. Um, I played sports in high school. Is that a you know good weight, muscle, got to college. Everything's kind of fell off a cliff. Um, 
metabolism slowed, just getting older. Um, I gained quite a bit of weight. Um, I was telling Cade and Coach Herb when I started um, in high school, I was probably like 165, 170. Um, before I started seeing Cade and, and Coach Herb, um, the highest weight I got up to was around like 225, 230. I was able to get down a little bit by myself, but I still couldn't get past the 190. I could not get lower than that. It was not working for me. And I tried seeing a personal trainer before, didn't make much progress, bought into to Cade and Coach Herb, and I, the weight just came off. Um, not overnight, but I was seeing that steady decline. If I go look at my little scale chart on my phone, I can see it's just a steady decline with weight, muscle going up, it works. Um, so I would highly encourage it. Um, buy in, trust what they're saying, it works. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. And we're, we had a little hiccup here with your craziness of work, but we're, we're going right back in that trending direction, my man. So <laughs> for sure. Appreciate that. Well, cool guys. Well, we've gone on, I guess a full hour. Jeez. So I'll, I'll respect the rest of y'all's time. Um, but appreciate you being on the call. Hope you guys are looking forward to doing these on Mondays and we'll have some familiar faces probably at each time as well. So, um, very cool. Herb, you got anything? To no, yeah, yeah. Hey guys, you know, again, um, you know, Cade and I constantly have meetings every week. What can we do more? How can we get the success more? We want to guarantee the success. How do we up the percentages? You know, so again, it's just information. It's you guys having great communication with us. <clears throat> I love, I love what we do for a living, but you guys got to execute it. Right. I mean, I'll be up 5 30 tomorrow doing legs in the gym at six. So I'll be, I'll do what I got to do. Um, you guys got to do what you got to do. Right. And it shows as you, as uh, Leo and Autumn, as you get used to these groups, you're going to see the same people every time. You're going to see the same successful people every time because they're surrounding themselves with the like-minded people. So no, I, I'm glad that you guys are here. I love to see the new faces. Um, and like I said, um, you know, I don't mind doing more work to help you guys out. So let's do these Monday calls. Don't wait till Monday to have that uh, conversation. Text the question to Kate and I, let us do some research if we got to. You know, like I've been in this business a long time. I've got guys all across this country, all across the world that I trained and trained with. So if there's a question I can't figure out, I can find the guy who's got the information. So um, looking forward to it. Awesome. Cool, guys. We'll let you get to your evening. So appreciate you. If you're watching the recording of this, um, like Herb said, let us know if you got questions for next week and everything like that. Shoot us that shoot us that over. And that, have a great rest of your Monday. Let's crush the rest of the week. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. All right.